keynote speaker this year, it appears that Lucy has a way of reaching out and welcoming a newcomer to Cleveland. Last year was Indians manager Manny Acta. Mr. Bernardo Garcia is the recently hired commissioner for the City of Cleveland's Water Department. Prior to coming to Cleveland, he had complete responsibility for the Water Service Department of Kansas City, Missouri, including, including overseeing an operating budget of $180 million and over $2 billion in planned capital improvements. Also, during his professional career, Mr. Garcia worked in the Tampa area of Florida with a myriad of responsibilities. He served as Director of Public Works in the Corpus Christi area of Texas and served as County Engineer in Frio County, Texas. In addition, from 1975 to 1985, Mr. Garcia was a captain in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Mr. Garcia earned his Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering from the Red Raiders of Texas Tech University and took graduate coursework in Civil Engineering at the University of New Mexico. Additionally, he attended the U.S. Uh, Army Officers Candidate School for Leadership Training. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Bernardo Garcia as the 2011 Hispanic Heritage Month keynote speaker. Let us give him a warm Cleveland welcome. short time, about 36 days, in this wonderful metropolis of Cleveland. Haven't been here a few times before, but not involved in the area, but kind of driving through the airport. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised that it's such a large uh, industrial area with a lot of communities, uh, with a downtown that hasn't been destroyed as other cities have. We all I want to live this revival of going back 80 years, but uh, we seem to have done a good job bulldozing a lot of the architecture that our ancestors so proudly, proudly built. I want to thank Mayor Jackson for giving me the opportunity to come to Cleveland and serve this community. Uh, Mayor Jackson was instrumental in the interview process. Obviously, he chose it as something that had a particular importance to to his administration and to you uh, in this community. Obviously the water department was just a commodity that uh, we humans uh, and the carbon area can't survive without. And uh, as I came here, uh, people said, uh, over there by the lake, uh, and the lake, and I just couldn't conceptually grasp what lake they were talking about. Uh, we in other places think that's an ocean, but they said the lake over there. But getting my bearings, uh, we moved on. And in having been here 36 days, you know, going out in the community and talking to uh, my employees and talking to uh, other employees in the area, they always ask, was well, have you met the mayor? And I said, yes, I have. And he said, well, what do you think? I said, well, I find him as a very respectful gentleman, gentle in his own way, uh, caring, and has a listening ear. I uh, said he's pointedly said some things that he wants done in this community, but basically they're for the common good of us all. Uh, he shares in the areas of making it better, making it worthwhile. But one thing I do here, I asked him, well, what do you think? You know, kind of reversing the question. And I hear this constantly about our mayor, that he is a caring mayor. I hear it from the minorities, I hear it from the African Americans, I hear it from the Hispanics, I hear it from all cultures. They say he understands us, he hears us. And in having been here a short stay, I can tell you that I can confirm that. He is a caring mayor. We have some titles in Spanish that we reserve for our best women and our best gentlemen. 
We have the titles of Señor, La Señorita, but we also have a couple of titles that we use, that we use for uh, respect. We use it for our elders. We use it for our, leader, our leaders in the community. Those titles are, and I'm sure you've heard them, but maybe not pay too much attention to those titles. We have Doña. It's reserved for our ladies. The ladies that share, the ladies that care in our communities, in our families. We have the other masculine title of Don. We don't use it lightly. We don't give it away. You gain it. You gain it because we respect you, because you've set the example, and because you chose to put your foot forward and lead your family, your community, your neighbors, your relatives in a proper course, a proper course of humanity, a proper course where we care, where we give back to our community. And that title is done. And I will say to you today that knowing what I know now about our mayor, nuestro alcalde, nuestro presidente del municipio, el alcalde, Don Francisco Jackson, deserves that title. <laughs> So if you hear me now talking about Don Francisco, not the one on the TV, not the popular one that's been there for 42 years, but our own Don and La Ciudad de Cleveland. If I may again, let's share you some stories about our culture. Our culture obviously is Hispanic. Our culture is very broad, as you know. At one time, if you go back in history, the Spanish, the Hispanics, especially from Spain and Portugal, own most of the Western Hemisphere. If you could take it and draw a line from San Agustin in Florida, which was discovered, by the way, it is the oldest city in the United States in 1565, before the pilgrims even landed in, in Plymouth, by the way. The Spanish were there, and we've heard of Spanish Florida. The Spanish were adventurers, they were explorers, and to a degree, not like the term converts, that came later in history. But they did what they had to do, is to move to the West. But if you go to San Agustin, Florida, which I have, and you draw a line in the U.S., you hit San Diego, California, a beautiful city. And I find it very marvelous, because my wife is from San Diego, a Californian, uh, transported there by our family, and moved from Mexico. But if you take that line, you west, San Agustin uh, to San Diego, and then you go north up to the Washington area, the San Juan Islands, next to marvelous San, uh, Seattle. And then you connect that triangle, you will see that that's about two thirds of the United States. That portion was at one time owned by Spain, two thirds of that area. And if you look today to Central America, our central countries, Honduras, you know, those countries that uh, are in the uh, Isthmus. And if you take South America, even Brazil, that's Portuguese, most of the Western Hemisphere at one time, the Western Hemisphere, a whole hemisphere, was dominated and explored and set the pace for the future. It was owned by Spain. And obviously through the last 300 years or 200 years from the 1810 when Mexico gained its independence and other countries proceeded after that, things have changed. History sometimes doesn't treat us well, but we respect what has happened. Out of that, cultures develop. The Hispanic culture developed out of that. Now let me tell you a story about Hispanics. Hispanics come like...